This is Taking Care of Business with Marty Pay and Clay Kerner on Kern Radio, News Talk 1180. Taking Care of Business is brought to you by Alliance Brokers and Consultants and Human Resources Outsourcing Incorporated. Now, here are your local business professionals ready to help you take care of business. Marty and Clay. Welcome to Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio, News Talk 1180 with your host, Clay Kerner, and I'm Marty Pay. Clay, you're smiling. <laughs> I know. It's funny, isn't it? You're wondering why, too. I think I'm excited about our guest today. I think so, too. We've had some great shows lately. Uh, all year, we've had some great shows. Last week, we had uh, Keith Woolridge, Damon Smothers, Michael Bowers talking about the legacy of Martin Luther King. And I think we're going to have them back on because we had a lot of people, uh, a lot of feedback on that show. We kind of touched the surface on uh, a lot of different issues. And the week before that, we had an old friend of mine, Dr. William Allen, who uh, was the Human Rights Commissioner under President Reagan. And that was a fantastic show. And so. also the political philosopher professor at Michigan State University most recently. Yes, yes. And he's now a political consultant on the Middle East. So he talked a lot about Egypt, which is interesting. Which is another great segue because we've got some great shows coming. Uh, Shannon Grove's coming on next weekend, our Assemblywoman. And I just confirmed a guest that I'm really ecstatic about. I can't mention his name until we confirm the date. But uh, let me just say that there probably isn't anyone else in the country that knows as much about the Middle East and our involvement as this man. And uh, leave it at that, and we'll have some details about him probably on Facebook this week or uh, next weekend on the show. But today... Today, we want to talk about Wisconsin and what's going on in the middle, Midwest and across the nation as far as the unions. And we have two great guests, one in studio, our own supervisor, Zach Scribner, uh, who really was ahead of the curve on this issue. And by phone, Michael Turnipseed, the executive director of uh, Kern County Taxpayers Association. Zach, Michael, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Good afternoon. It's great to be here. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? Fine, Zach. How are you? Great. Hey, thanks. You know, we almost didn't have uh, the show, you guys. Um, I, I was a little sick and tired, and I thought maybe I'd uh, get a fake note from my doctor and uh, maybe miss this show in the next nine days. And, uh, you know, Kern wouldn't care. You wouldn't care, would you, Clay? No, as long as I got my salary and my benefits, what do I care? Yeah, and then you come back in nine days and nobody cares, right? Yeah. There's no consequences for it as long as you have that fake note from the doctor. Sure. I mean, what what kind of insanity is this? You know, where you can take off nine days, go back to work, and, and not have any consequences for it? I think it's especially insane when the doctor does it on television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did uh, either one of you, Mike or Zach, hear the uh, interview that Megan Kelly did with um, the head of the union? No, I did not. Oh, it was an excellent interview. I, I, saw it, I saw it the other day, and then I saw it this morning again on Facebook. She asked him, I counted six different times... Do you think this is wrong, that, that teachers got a fake note? And he refused to answer the question. He kept on dodging it and running around it, and she finally said, well, I, I guess you're not going to answer that question. But, you know, how, how can you think that's okay? Well, I don't, I, you can't. You can't, and that's why he didn't answer the question. Yeah, I mean, you can't what, defend what's, it. What's the justification for sure. it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that also leads to the other question, which is I thought we were going to be a little more civil. Aren't we in this age of... Uh, being civil amongst the Republicans and the Democrats, and uh, what happened to civility when uh, you know you you not only disagree and walk out of the chambers and leave to the next state? It's one thing when you go to the doctor's office, you pay him your copay, and you know, I at least fake to have a cough. But here you are, we live in Milwaukee. You're in Madison. You're carrying a picket sign, yelling at the top of your lungs. And the doctor's signing you an excuse. Uh, where is the, the medical and moral ethics of the physician? I mean, they do take certain pledges to be moral and ethical and all these things that they do. And to do that, he's basically committed fraud upon the people of Wisconsin, so he should have been arrested, and let alone probably lose his medical license. Well... You guys are probably much more able to answer this question than I am, but my, my thinking was, is there any kind of um, retribution that we have on the teachers for this? I mean, you know, th th there's one thing to try to bargain and, and you know, and to try to defend your position in, in, the, in the field of ideas, but just to walk out for nine days like that is ridiculous. I mean, you know, Reagan turned around and fired the air traffic controllers for that. 
Um, yeah, actually, we we did a little research uh, at the county because we were we had heard um, indications that the uh, that our SEIU union may strike. Um, this was this was a couple of weeks back over some of the some of the negotiations going on between the county and the public employee unions. And uh, it's it's actually illegal to take time off from w- to take sick time, but not actually be sick. And the, the you know our our, our recourse um, first of all is to go through the disciplinary process um, for our employees. But but as far as the illegality at it, you know uh, of it, that's um, would be up to the district attorney on whether or not they would actually prosecute someone for illegally taking sick time when they weren't sick. And how would we know? Well, you know we would we would uh, you know check and see who's uh, on the picket line, and if they took took a sick day, yet they're out, you know, picketing in the at the county building, then you know. Yeah, I mean that's ridiculous, Clay. I've never seen it before, where people are actually playing to the cameras with their posters and claiming to be homesick. I mean, it's one thing to be your sick out and you stay home, and at least you stay in your house. You watch TV. Nobody really knows. You actually maybe go to a doctor to get a legitimate excuse because you want to be covered. But to actually jump up and down, yelling, screaming, hollering, and and see, I'm on, I called in sick today. I mean, there you know there are you know even school teachers in California they get what's called personal necessity leave, which they can take days off for any reason. But there's usually only two or three days. But when you're claiming a specific sick leave, which they obviously in California have ten days, and you're not sick, that's fraud. And I hope that the district attorney back in Milwaukee or wherever the teachers are from prosecutes the teachers who committed fraud. Well, well, uh, Michael, all they're really asking for is the opportunity to sit down at the table like grown-ups and work together to solve these problems. <laughs> uh, well, where are their legislators? The legislators are supposed to be there representing them. Instead, they're on vacation over in Illinois uh, enjoying the beautiful weather of minus 20 degrees. You know, I have uh, this happened in Texas, as you know, a while back. But I have never seen this happen uh, from Republicans. It always seems to be Democrats that don't want to come to the table unless they're in control. I think, uh, I hate to kind of say this, but even though Republicans are the minority in California and they might oppose the budget, they don't run for Nevada to hide. They stay there and just say no like they just say no, but at least they don't, at least they show up. They well, earn their paycheck, they earn their per diems, because at least they're there in the building. Well, the fact I, that you leave a state because you're, you're basically trying to get away from control of the, of the law officials because the uh, Wisconsin uh, legal community has no authority in Illinois, and that's why they're hanging out in Illinois. But that has to come an in sooner or later. Yep. We're going to continue with that when we come back in a minute on Kern Radio News Talk 1180.